Hi, we're going to talk about collections now. So when using collections, we're going to start by talking about how they're similar and how they're different. Both arrays and collections can hold value types and reference types. So value types might be referring to a, a Boolean, an integer, a decimal. A reference type could be referring to an object, for example. They're different in that, well, the main thing you'll see in terms of functionality is that arrays are fixed in size and collections are variable in size. So if you have a list where you're not sure how many uh, elements are going to be in that list, collections are very useful for that. You can reference items by either a, a key, a, a string value, or an index. The numeric position is the index, so that's what we've seen before. That's like using an array. So, for example, you can find in the stores table in the tables collection by calling it a stores or by calling zero. We'll see examples of that later. Uh, there's a sorted list collection type and a list collection type. The sorted list has a key and that uses a key and value pair. So you use a key to access the value, which can be any type of object. It can be useful for inserting things, but we're not really using this one for Lab 4 so much. The list collection is nice. It adjusts its capacity as things are needed. It has a contains method allowing you to search for certain things. There's an insert method for inserting to a specific index and a sort method. And they both have add, clear, remove, and remove at methods, which do sort of what you would expect. So here's an example of a typed collection. Uh, typed collections have stricter typing. So for example, with this one, it's declared as a list. And the first thing that's happening is an integer is being added to it. It's a list of integers, so that's good. Adding the next number is just referencing an integer variable, so that will work properly. But when you try to add in a string, it's actually going to not compile because it would cause a runtime error. In the bottom example, you're going to see that because it's got it's typed, there's no casting required. So for example, a uh, number is declared as an integer, and if it's going to count things in a list, you can assign a value to the variable number from the numbers list because the numbers list itself is integer values. Here's a fairly long example. It's going to go over the next two slides. It's looking at the sales totals list. It's declared as a list of decimal numbers and it's got four elements to start with. On this line we're inserting a new first element. So at index 0 we're inserting this 2745.73. Now there are five things in the list in total. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to be removing something at index 1. So that's going to remove the one that was originally in the in the first position, but index 1, uh, 3275.68. Right now, sales 2 has the value of 4398.55. Here we're using that contains method that we mentioned earlier to find a certain value. So here it's happening that if this find sales value exists, then it's going to remove it. As it happens, it does exist. It's the first thing in the list. So right now, that value is being removed from the start of the list. Then the list is sorted, so that changes things. Because of the sort, the smallest value is going to go to the beginning. So if you were actually looking at that list right now, you would see that the first value is 1,933.98, followed by that 4,398.55, and then that 5,289.75. So when we do a binary search for sales 2, which currently has the value of 4,398.55, it's going to return the index of 1. That's actually the second element right now. Here's an example where there's a payroll list being declared. So we've been working with this payroll class quite a bit, and it is fairly similar to what you've been doing in, in your summative labs. The bottom part of this example is important. You can see it's referencing a list box, LST payroll. So there's this method being created called fill products list box. The first thing it's doing is removing the list of items. Items in a list are a collection. What this will do is actually add items to the list box. An interesting note about how it's adding things to the text box is it's, it's writing in um, the payroll item's name, and then it's concatenating in a colon and then concatenating in the pay. This could also be done with a two-string method, but we don't know what the two-string method necessarily is for payroll, unless you've memorized it from some of the examples that have been given in class. Some people have already seen two-string methods being overridden. Here's, here's some elaboration on that. 
Since the items collection of a list box or combo box is objects and not strings, it can be handy to do this toString method that's going to write to something. So this will most likely be really handy in Lab 4, for example, where you're writing out all of the workers that are input into the form. So this is overriding toString. So this is a function, presumed to be in a class, that is going to be outputting the employee's hours and the employee's pay. Or in our case, it might be handy to have the employee's name, their number of pieces, their salary, whatever they need. And that's it for this video. More to come.